All right, Al, thanks. And now to more of our exclusive conversation with President Obama as he prepares for tonight's State of the Union address. We covered a lot of subjects and we covered a lot of ground. We actually toured the White House as we talked about how the office has changed him both as a leader and as a father. This staircase here, where does this go? This goes up into the residence. So if we have a state dinner or some very formal function, Michelle and I will go from the residence on the second floor. We will walk down. But At the end of a long day, is it possible for you to walk up those stairs and ever leave the job completely downstairs? Well, first of all, I never actually use these stairs. That's ceremonial. That's ceremonial. When they say that this is a 24-7 hour job, on this one, they're not exaggerating. It, it, you, you take it with you. The one time when I really can leave it behind is throughout my presidency, I've been pretty religious about dinner at 6.30 with Michelle and the girls. And when I'm sitting around the dinner table, then I'm a dad. And we spend most of our time listening to the girls talk about their days, and they are not interested in mine that much. But teenage talk from personal experience can be more harrowing than what, what <laughs> happens over in the Oval Office there. Would your family ever say that that's the one part of the job that gets difficult, the fact that you're never 100 percent, except for those dinners you just talked about, away from the job? My ability to function as a present father, a mm -hmm. guy who's there and engaged, uh, was maybe stronger once I got to the White House than before. Because when I was a senator, I was commuting. The girls were still back in Chicago. Right. Uh, when I was campaigning for president, I was gone all the time. And I don't have trouble switching off when it comes to listening to Malia and Sasha. That actually is a time when I can uh, kind of block everything else out. That's the one have thing you used I it? Noticed. The first time you and I sat down here was February 1st, 2009. Mm -hmm. You had been president 11 days. If 54-year-old Barack Obama could go back and talk to 47-year-old Barack Obama, who'd only been president 11 days, what would you tell him that he didn't know about being president? Well, uh, I would tell him, first of all, that uh, your hair is going to go grayer a lot faster than you anticipated. I, I think the most important thing I would say to, to an earlier version of myself would be to uh, communicate constantly and with confidence to the American people uh, because this place has a tendency to isolate you. You recognize that, uh, particularly during times of stress, the American people need to hear from their president in terms of what it is exactly that we're trying to, to do. Things that I've done well during the campaign, I have not always done well while I've been president. You talk about the American people hearing from their president. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we all remember you stepping for the cameras and talking about your plans for executive action on gun control. Yeah. And you became extremely emotional. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was surprised by that. I, I wasn't surprised about how I felt uh, because the day that Sandy Hook happened remains one of the worst in my presidency. And traveling up there for the memorial service and meeting with the families just a couple of days after those children and, and those teachers had, had lost their lives was as hard as anything I've ever done. But I, I didn't expect that evoking that right. would trigger uh, those kinds of emotions. A, a part of it is that um, you know we had just come back from Christmas break. I had just spent time with my daughters. One of them is about to go to college. And uh, seeing those parents who I've gotten to know now over the course of several years and, and thinking about uh, how any parent feels with that loss, uh, it felt very personal to me. I would think that at an earlier point of your presidency, had that feeling started to well up in you. I might have clamped it down. You might have suppressed it. Yeah. There's no doubt that I am looser now. There have been times during the course of the presidency where you, I, I've tightened up. You know, as you go into your last year, you start uh, realizing that ultimately how well you've done here is going to be judged not by tomorrow's polls or you know, today's headlines. They're going to be judged by you know, people who are looking back at you 20, 30 years from now, and so you better let it rip. You're starting to sound a little like George W. Bush, who told me one day, Matt, I'm going to be dead when my legacy <laughs> is decided. 
Early next year, if tradition holds, you and Mrs. Obama are going to go to the main door of the White House. It will open and a motorcade will pull in. And the incoming president, whether it's a man or a woman, is going to get out of that car. How much jeopardy will your legacy be in if that person is not a Democrat? Well, I'm going to be working hard to make sure it is a Democrat. And there's no doubt that given uh, what the Republican candidates have said, that there are going to be some things that I think are really important that they're going to try to reverse. Even something as uh, controversial in the Republican Party as uh, Obamacare. Uh, When something works or the evidence shows that it's helping people and you want to stop it just for ideological reasons, eh, it turns out to be a little more difficult. You know, certainly when they start dealing with foreign policy and uh, if they think that somehow by talking a little tougher uh, they're going to somehow change the complexities of uh, the Middle East for example, well turns out that's not how it works and so I think there is a really uh, useful uh, uh, awakening that takes place when you walk into this uh, office. Uh, A lot of the campaign rhetoric you realize Uh, has to give way to some very uh, hard, tough reality. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.